This is Liz Colburn, host of The Morning Uplift. Thank you for listening to the following broadcast on Public Health Media. This is Madeline, host of Crown and Dangerous here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come back to check out my show, Crown and Dangerous, where Jessica and I talk about our time in the pageant world. A new show comes out bi-weekly on Thursdays. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Crown and Dangerous. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. right. Have you ever heard that quote before? Have you ever wondered, is it true? Well, it is. Today, good morning. Welcome to Public House Media. Welcome to Choose to Rise. Today, we're going to be talking about self-efficacy. And what is self-efficacy? What does that mean, Kim? Well, self-efficacy is a the belief you'll be able to accomplish a task or not. Uh, Albert Bandura is a wide regarded as one of the most influential psychologists of all time. He um, has this definition of self-efficacy. He says, the belief in one's capability to organize and execute the courses of action required to manage prospective situations. Now, that, that definition is kind of academic, <laughs> right? It has, it's kind of convoluted, but let's just you know, go back to Henry Ford. He said, whether you think you can or whether you think you can, you're right. And I completely agree with Henry Ford. If you believe that you can accomplish something, you are way more actually going to be able to accomplish it than if you think or if you have any sort of doubt in yourself at all about how you're going to get there. Good morning. Again, I'm going to welcome back to Choose Your Rise. I'm so glad that you're here with me and that, you know, this is what we're really all about here at Choose Your Rise is helping people build their confidence, building their self-efficacy, building all their the belief in themselves and knowing that um, God's created them for a purpose. God's created you for a purpose. He wants you to go out and do great things. And in order to do that, you have to believe that you are worth it. You have to believe that you're possible. You have to believe that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Our mind is a powerful thing. It is the most powerful um, tool, that I guess you could say, that we have in our back pocket, that we have in our body. Um, it's the most important thing that we have going on. Um, a lot of people would say that your heart runs your body, but that's true. It does functionally run your body. However, your brain controls everything that's inside of you. So I would say that when we can produce more self-efficacy in our life, when we can really hone in on the power of the, of our mind, then we can really do so many great things. So today I really want to, I want to talk to you about four things, um, four ways to improve your self-efficacy because it's when you can believe that you're possible, when you can believe that you're doing great things, you can do so much more. So your self-efficacy will determine all the following, how motivated you are to do on a task, the amount of effort you're willing to put into it to achieve that task, for how long you're actually gonna persist when you, you face adversity, and whether you're ultimately going to succeed at achieving the task that you set out to do. Self-efficacy is so important in actually completing something. Now, like I said, if you don't believe in something, how likely are you to try doing it? Like, if I don't believe that I'm a good dancer, am I gonna enter a dance competition? Probably not. You're probably not even going to get me out on a dance floor at a wedding. Ask my husband. I mean, unless it's like a slow dance. But like, seriously, if you don't believe that you're capable of doing it, you're really not ever going to try it. So how much effort are you willing to exert towards something that you don't think you're going to do? When you're trying to come across an obstacle or you suffer a setback, the answers really come down to two questions. You won't put, you won't put much effort into it and you won't give up the, your first sign of trouble. Those aren't questions, but those are statements. <laughs> the opposite is also true. If you believe in something greatly, if you believe in, um, if you believe that you're able to do it, you're you're more eager to get started. You'll put a lot of effort into the situation. You are highly likely that you persist until you succeed because you have a belief in yourself that you're capable of doing it. In the business that I work in, in the the job that I have, that I'm so blessed to have. Um, 
I work with people all the time that are really working on their self-efficacy more than they're working on their health. So they, they believe when they are really ready to go all in, when they're really ready to start doing something, um, it's really measure, I, when I start working with them as a coach, first I have to measure their efficacy. Are they really committed? Do they really want to be able to do something? Because the people that are committed are the ones that actually ha- get results. The ones that don't believe that they can lose the 10 pounds are the ones that falter or don't push play or eat the, the donuts instead of the apple. Like the people that really want something in life are the ones that are going to go for it and, and do things. So keep in mind that self-efficacy is a task and situation specific. An illustration, you may have high levels of self-efficacy when it efficacy when it comes to math or, you know, weight loss or friendships. Um, But you may have a different kind of level of self-efficacy when it comes to something at work. Maybe it's public speaking. Maybe it's doing something athletic. Maybe it's doing um, something else in life that somebody wants you to be able to do, but you're just not quite there yet. So when you've got goals that you've set for yourself in the areas of things that you want to do, let's talk about how you can increase your self-efficacy so that you can accomplish the goals that you said that you wanted to do. The first thing to do is mastery, okay? We're gonna talk about mastery, modeling, persuasion, and physical factors, all right? The first one is mastery. The um, when the first source of uh, is mastery. If you have done well performing a certain task or in the past, you probably have some sort of strong belief that you're going to be able to do it again. Um, I used to be a runner, okay? Used to be is the key words there. Uh, I in college I tore my hamstring and um, have always kind of struggled. At least my body struggles um, with running long distances anymore. Now recently, um, I my kids ran a mile and at a fun run thing here. So I was like, you know what? I can run a mile. <laughs> like I am in good physical shape. I push play every single day, most days, um, 99% of the week, and I am in good shape. So I decided I'm gonna go run a mile. Now, self-efficacy came into play here because um, I remembered my past success of running miles and miles back in the day. I remembered what it looked like and felt like to go down that gravel road and come back. But when it really got into the, the nitty gritty, when my lungs were burning and my legs were so tight and it, you know that, that the injury was kind of coming back at me, I really had to focus on what it is that I wanted to, in order to finish that. And there were times that very close to the end of the mile that I wanted to quit, but my self-efficacy is what got me there. I was remembering remembering my mastery. I was remembering my past successes. I was remembering to set goals and um, to an element of change, but also to be real. I was realistic and attainable. I set just a one mile goal. I didn't run 10 miles. I just kept going. And if I failed at a certain type of task in the past, shut the door guys. Sorry, <laughs> my son interrupted. Uh, mom life, right? So if you failed at a certain type of task in the past, you know, something like that's going to come back and get to you. So if you can really focus in on the things that you are able to accomplish and the goals that are are around you, those stumbles and those setbacks won't necessarily happen as often, or they'll just feel normal because you have done this in the past. So when I did the mile, when I finally finished it and I was like, you know what, that felt good. And my legs felt different the the next day, but it's something that I knew I could accomplish. I had self-efficacy to do it. And if I didn't really believe that I could run that mile, I wouldn't have started. The second thing to uh, self-efficacy is modeling. The, you know, it would, there's a lot of experiences and observing situations where we believe we can do it because somebody else has done it around us. Um, you know, I my, several of my friends, some of my mentors will always say success is not above you. Success is around you. You are the like the five people that you spend your most time with. And if you have role models in your life, if you've got people that are sur- you're surrounding yourself with that are doing the things that you want to do, you are way more likely to do them as well. Within your circle of friends or your acquaintances, how many of them are pushing to bigger goals? How many of them are taking going farther for you to, um, you know, go the distance? How many of them quit when it gets hard? How many of them are, are doing things that, that go all the way? If you are, are, if you're answering that question with a lot of them are quitting, then the more likely that you're going to quit too. So find people, surround yourself with people that are going to go the distance with you. You know, if they can do it, 
I can do it, kind of having that mentality. And if you're surrounding yourself with people that are, are going for the bigger dream, they're going for the big goal, they're going for it and they're accomplishing it, you are way more likely to accomplish it as well. So when we're, when that's one of the things that I love about my business is that we have accountability groups. Um, we have these online healthy, healthy wellness groups that um, help people get their goal. They're surrounding themselves with people that are on the same mission. They're surrounding themselves with people that have the same kinds of goals as them. And we can support each other to get there. So, you know, one of the things that I that I love about this is building that self efficacy, efficacy, that self confidence is that you're, when you connect to people that are doing what you're doing, you're much more likely to succeed. The third source of self efficacy is social persuasion. <laughs> social persuasion is the third source, and what others tell you about your ability to achieve a certain task or matter. So, if someone tells you you're good at something, that's what this is about. So, look for people who are encouraging to you, that are, that are encouraging you to go for your dreams, are encouraging you to achieve certain things, are cheering you on in life. And at the same time, stay away from those people who are trying to rain on your parade. People who try to convince you that you don't have what it takes. People that are convinced, trying to convince you that you know that you're 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 not cut out for that. That you're that you don't you know they're not supporting you in any sort of way. Then you need to cut loose of those people. That they're trying to hold you back. It's usually because of their own self-limiting beliefs and their own lack of self-efficacy, and not really about you. So I would say go for it. Push towards your dreams. Do what you need to do in order to really be focused on what you want to achieve. Uh, the number four is f- source of self-efficacy is physiological factors. The emotional state that you're in when you t- and the, the time that you act on your goals will affect 100% your self-efficacy. But what also it's important is you tell yourself what you're feeling. So when, uh, for example, my daughter, um, when she is mad about having to clean a room, how well does that go, <laughs> right? But if she's happy about something, if we can get her in a good mood when she needs to go clean her room, it becomes a fun thing or something that is, is good to do. So when you get a little nervous about something, when you're, you interpret that nervous, uh, you can interpret it two different ways. You can take it as a sign of excitement and that you're gonna go forward and, and get out of your comfort zone and, and do things and move forward in a positive way. Or you can interpret that uh, nervousness as anxiety and fear, and that's likely going to take you in a downward path. So I would really hope and pray for you today that you can take one of these four steps of efficacy and really move forward um, in, a, in a good way. And if you believe you can or you believe you can't, that's the truth. So if you are taking these four steps of efficacy, if you're math- taking what it is that you've already mastered and doing it again, if you're surrounding yourself with people that are believing in you and can do great things, if you're really taking action and, and really sir, um, finding people that are going to help you uh, get you know so, uh, social persuasion, so surround yourself with the good people, or if you are taking your emotions and really run, running with them, find your people, feel the feels of the things that are going to help you keep going. And I hope today that you have um, are able to take some of these efficacy tips and and really run with them. And, you know, as a coach, um, you know, I really I really encourage and really support, and I'm there for the people that are part of my groups. And you know, if you're ever in a need of of being supported or finding more self efficacy or you know surrounding yourself with people who believe in you and want you to encourage your goals, I highly suggest that you connect and let's talk a little bit more about how we can get you moving and grooving. Um, you know, the through personal development, through moving more, through eating right through all of those things, believing in possibilities. One of the most wonderful things that has ever happened to me in my life is joining this community and being able to bring my voice to you and help you become, you know, rise up out of your current situation and live your best life. Now, Many of you have read the book, The Little Engine That Could, and The Little Engine That Could is really the the be all of self-efficacy. If you believe that you can achieve your dreams, you are going to increase your self-efficacy. And I believe in you. I believe that you can do anything that you set your mind to. And I really want you to be able to um, practice that, encourage that. So I'd highly encourage you to join my October group that's coming up. It's called Lifting to Happiness. And we're going to be working on a movement. We're going to be working on good nutrition. And we're going to be reading the book Happiness Advantage, which is always going to help um, improve your self-efficacy when you can increase the happiness inside of you. So if you're interested in that, let me know. We're going to be getting started up here in October. And so there's still plenty of time for you to get involved. I would love to have you a part of it. Um, And so just 
message me at kjpmeyer at gmail.com. Choose to rise up at gmail.com and I would love to connect with you and get, get you started. You can also message me here in Public House Media and get you going. And last but not least, I would really love to um, share with you some Wallace Meats. Wallace Meats are a great source of organic uh, and and a fabulous source of of protein, of really good, wholesome stuff. Good morning, Maddie. And um, they are a farm here in Iowa. They're actually some of my neighbors. Um, They're pretty amazing. Sorry, Kim. Iowa? Nice. Siri's trying to tell me things. Um, And so if it's you're, if you're looking for something, they, they are really working on improving the land, which is improving the animals, which improves, improves our, our own health. So if you're looking to get some really amazing um, organic meat, um, I would really encourage you to check out uh, Wallace Farms. Um, you can go to wallacefarms.com and use the code KimMeyer20 to get 20% off your order. Um, they do ship to all of the Midwest, and I bet they can get it other places as well. Um, and so just go check them out and use that code KimMeyer20 and uh, Siri will tell you to go there. Um, <laughs> it's been a good day. So if you have a fabu- hope you have a fabulous Friday that you can build your self-efficacy and have an amazing, amazing day. Have a great week- good weekend. See you Monday. Bye.